Hello, I'm Michael Moore, and we're going over headache management with this video. First consideration I want the listener to be advised is that headaches can be caused by a multitude of reasons. They could be circulatory, they could be anxiety, they could be a tumor, they could be a stroke. So there's a lot of catastrophic type of events that could be serving as a warning with a headache starting. There are other types of headaches that are caused by muscular tension called the musculoskeletal headache. But most headaches, whether they're caused by something internal in the brain or external with muscles that are crossing the skull from the spine, will produce an antalgic posture in which the patient will oftentimes begin to shrug and then their, their chin will go out and they'll kind of tuck their head in a way that the muscles here at the base of the skull close down. When these shoulders shrug, there's a muscle that comes from the scapula right here and inserts at the skull on the superior nuchal line, which on your model here is right about this portion here. That nuchal line also has another important muscle coming from it, and it's a muscle that comes from the shoulder blade and shrugs and attaches right to the transverse process of C1. So both of them can cause a great deal of tension in the neck when a person is in pain. What we feel happens the theoretically is that there are some very deep muscles that come from these two vertebrae, C1 and C2. There's one muscle on the right called the rectus capitis posterior minor, which comes from that protuberance up to the inferior part of the nuchal line, and then from C2 spinous, just lateral, to where the minor is comes the rectus capitis posterior major, and then there's the oblique that comes from the transversus, and it's just lateral to the major. So we have one, two, three suboccipital muscles on the right, and the same three on the left. In between two of those muscles is a very important nerve that comes out from the brain stem here between the occiput and C1 and innervates, in this case, the whole left side of Kate's skull. And then we'd have a counterpart on the right. If these muscles are contracting in a protective mode, it is thought that they would choke the nerve out and deprive the nerve of oxygen, and thus the pain, patient could get pain in the pattern of left side, right side, or both. If we can get the patient positioned so that they can massage this area in a way that their arms are relaxed and only the fingers are doing the massage, then we're able to oftentimes relieve the musculoskeletal tension and create a little less intensity of the headache. In some cases, if it's strictly a musculoskeletal headache, it can take the headache totally away. So we're pretending we're at a table, like a kitchen table, and then we have one elbow will be elevated because this hand is going to be doing the massage with her fingers like this. And if she was to hold the hand in the air, the trapezius muscle would activate because it is a stabilizer of whatever the arm bone does. In this case, the arm bone's elevated. So this trapezius is activated. We don't want that because the trapezius is covering the top of where our fingers need to access and it, that trapezius muscle needs to stay relaxed. So if I have Kate's elbow on the table and then her chin is in and she just leans forward a little bit and then 
on the treatment table, I would have found which of the muscles is most specifically the most tender and tight, and then she would be taught to go to the left and the right, right against the skull, as to where that muscle attaches with her finger. And she would go and do this for about two to four minutes if she had a left-sided headache in which she was trying to relieve the pain here, and then we would do something upcoming that will be called cup on forehead exercise to actually stretch these muscles after we massage them. As a means of treating the muscle by stretching it, we can oftentimes do this cup on forehead exercise in conjunction with the massage that we viewed earlier. With the cup on forehead exercise, it can be done on the floor or in a bed, and the patient is positioned so that their neck is comfortable and supported, and then she will have her thumbs sticking up so that out of her peripheral vision she can see these. Okay, now there are some muscles on the front that connect to the first two vertebra that are frequently weak in relation to the muscles that we just covered on the posterior side. These weakened muscles, called the prevertebral flexors, are going to be working very hard in this next exercise so that they move the skull in a way that does a maneuver like this, and the posterior suboccipital muscles that we covered in the massage component of this video would then elongate or stretch. If we had a person who was slouched in their chest, like I'm demonstrating, for them to look straight ahead, they would kink their skull in this manner and their muscles on the posterior side here, these suboccipitals, would be in a shortened position much of their day and possibly at night so that people with compromised posture also can benefit from stretching these tight suboccipital muscles that we'll be doing now and strengthening the prevertebral flexors. Now, we will be using the muscles that move the eyeball because we know they have a very close relationship with the deep muscles of the cervical spine. In this case, if Kate opens her eyes and then strains her eyes to look at her thumbs, uh, uh, without moving the skull, just the eyeball is going to strain, these deep muscles activate as well. So this is a very important relationship that is established very early on in our developmental sequence when babies are in their first three or four weeks and they're lifting their head and oftentimes lift with their eyes in order to turn their head if they're moving from one side to another while prone or belly down. These eye muscles are highly innervated. That means the muscle fiber ratio compared to nerve fiber ratio is the highest in the body. The second highest nerve to muscle fiber ratio is in the suboccipital muscles. So they are also highly innervated. In this case, we will ask Kate to use her eyes to look at her thumbs, and then she will move the cup that she has placed on her forehead, and the back of her skull will slide that direction, and the cup will slide towards her thumbs. And then the next component, which is the most difficult, mm -hmm. she will be asked to focus on these thumbs and then lift the skull one millimeter and do so without the chin moving. So the chin cannot elevate. Mm -hmm. And as she does this and it lifts, there could, uh, uh, the chin shouldn't move. Mm. And then focus, focus and then she lifts right there and she's doing it and she only can hold for about five seconds, four, three, two, one, and then it's time to rest. Hmm. And then her eyes reverse direction. 
just eyes only, so that these muscles in the front, the prevertebral flexors, have a chance to relax because their antagonist on the backside is contracting when her eyes reverse the direction. So once again, the eyes first without any skull motion, focus on the thumbs. Mm -hmm. The next thing to happen is the cup moves toward the thumbs. And then the third thing, if the person can do it, means that the skull has to lift, but that chin doesn't lift. And now as she lifts, it's right there, she's doing it. And then we have our count, five, four, three, two, one, and relax, and eyes shift. We have a great deal of success with this exercise when musculoskeletal headaches are caused by these deep muscles under sustained tension, and we feel putting pressure on this nerve. It is sometimes necessary to have the patient get strong and not produce the lift, but just do the eye movement to the thumbs and the cup movement, and do not produce the lift until these front muscles get stronger. Another important component is that where my hand is under the neck should not flatten when the skull is moved. What we would like to see is no part of the neck moves, only the skull moves. And you can see this skull joints right here as I expose them. They roll this way or glide this way. But the rest of the neck does not move. It does not flatten out. So Kate could go down with her chin like that and then her neck is flattening and moving and that could move parts of her neck which could produce pain. So we don't want to even take that risk. This exercise then has to be done purely with the axis of movement that is coming right here where my finger is. And that is why I said the cup should move toward the thumbs and then when she does the lift, the chin cannot come up. If the chin came up, then these muscles would have allowed the gap in the back to close down and possibly aggravate the headache. So it's very important that the chin not move when that skull lifts the one millimeter. So once again, here are the thumbs. The eyes shift to the thumbs and the eyes only, not the skull movement. The skull movement is second, and now the skull with the cup on it, and I don't say chin or nose, I just say skull with the cup, moves to the thumbs, and then focus intensely, and then the skull lifts one millimeter, and it's held there, five, four, three, two, one, zero, and then eyes reverse. Now I've had several interesting patients come with a long history of headaches. One individual had suffered from a headache for four years after her seat belt was not on and she crashed forward between the dash and the windshield and her head smashed in like this and really injured this part of her musculoskeletal. And we did the massage and she was taught this exercise as well as the self massage and she was able to get a handle on the daily headaches that she had been plagued by for four years. Another individual came after having had cervical surgery and then having been in two rear-end automobile accidents in which she was the passenger of the car that got rear-ended. So she was not a bad driver. Nevertheless, she came and did the cup on forehead exercise and built enough strength that she could hold it a minute so that she really developed strong anterior muscles in the front and kept her headaches at bay from these tight suboccipitals starting to contract whenever she was under her stressful job at work. 